Hi, welcome back to the Get A Brew channel. Today we're going to look at the new juicy new yeast. And look, let's face it, if you're not making a modern pale hazy ale now, are you really brewing? It's a huge trend that seems to be growing in popularity and we have a yeast strain that helps you make that beer easily, efficiently, effectively and consistently. So, yeah, yeah. so Andres is here from AB, Master Brewer. We've um, did a series with him covering the AB yeast strain. So he's helped select some of these strains. He's incredible experience in the brewing world. And I guess part of this video is to talk about his. So take us through the his craze and what, <laughs> <laughs> um, what considerations do the brewers need to be taken into consideration? Uh, when it comes to haze, uh, well, uh, first of all, we need to define haze, yeah. okay? Because there are different type of haze yeah. in, in, in brewing. So the the most you know popular or known haze is the protein polyphenol haze. Yeah. And uh, obviously, it's, it's dependent on the protein and polyphenol content yeah. in the world. The second haze is the bio biological haze which is contributed by the, the yeast, okay, you know, yeah. for no, uh, low flocculent uh, yeast, uh, brewing yeast strains like, like Nui. Yeah. And uh, it can be also by contamination in yeah. some cases. And the third case is the beta-glucan haze, so hemicellulose haze. So this is uh, a haze contributed by, you know, oat, for example, yeah. you know, that has high levels of beta-glucans. Actually, that's why brewers who are into, you know, New England IPAs and yeah. hazy beers, they use, uh, you know, some oat or oat malt in yeah. their grain bill. Well, fl flake torrified oats is one of our biggest sell, yeah. um, and yeah. we know yeah. that the brewers are using that in a large proportion of their grist, yes. probably 20% or something. Like exactly, up to 20%, yeah. Yeah. between 10 and 20%, up to 20%, and, and also they use, you know, wheat malt, yeah. uh, also because of the protein, protein polyphenol, yeah. right. right. And um, on the other haze is uh, the chemical haze. Yeah. And the chemical haze is basically uh, the, the beer stones, you know, that yeah. is a calcium oxalate. Yeah. And that comes straight from the malt yeah. and the calcium from the malt and the, the, the water chemistry. You yeah. Know, the, you're brewing water. So all this uh, contributes to, to the haze yeah. of uh, when you're dealing with uh, hazy beers, uh, not just the gist. Yeah. And in the case of the yeast, the biological haze is basically um, the, um, is, is related also with the monoproteins which are in the membrane yeah. uh, of, the, uh, of the cells of the yeast. And of course that depends from strains to strain. Some, some others have you know, higher levels than others. There's a study going on at the minute and um, another yeast company has been releasing information on this and they're suggesting that there's a haze positive range of strains and he is negative or neutral whatever terminology you want he is positive produces a stable he is because of the manoproteins Correct. whereas some of it um you know it's, it's that little bit more highly flocculent so it falls out and it's he is neutral so this particular new e is best classified as he is positive Would that's that right correct? that's yeah. right that's sure. right yeah and of course all chemical, you know, reactions and uh, is also related to the the charge, yeah. you know, positive and negative charge. You yeah. Know? So yeah, that's right. So this is about haze, you know. Yeah. So considerations, you know, for brewers and um, just like basics, I would say. Yeah. When you are designing, you know, recipes, uh, you know, hay, uh, New England IPAs or you know, hazy pale ales, is the, well, your grain bill. Let's start from the, you know, yeah. the grain bill. So first uh, the yeah, as we mentioned earlier, you know, you can use, you know, uh, you know higher levels of, you know, oat, yeah, you know. Yeah. Don't go too far because also you will have problems. If you had higher levels of beta-glucans, you will have a nightmare in your, you know, mash yeah. filtration. Yeah. And um, the use of wheat malt or wheat, you know, yeah. for to have higher levels of proteins, you know. And, uh, and then um, your, the use of yeast, of yeah. no-flocculant yeast, like Nui. Yeah. And um, also consider your water chemistry, the, the, the levels of calcium. Yeah. Uh, as you know, brewing is not black and white game, yeah. you know, so it's, it's always a compromise. 
and uh, calcium also helps uh, the, for the yeast activity, but yeah. also can promote uh, flocculation. Yeah. So if you have higher levels of calcium, also you might have an impact on the, you know, well, <laughs> on the haze. So okay. they will they will clarify your beer as well. Yeah. And um, and the dry hopping, of course, you yeah. know, that's a very important factor. So uh, you know how much and when yeah. you're doing your, your addition, you yeah. know. So um, you can do it, you know, uh, you know, um, during the primary fermentation, you know, yeah. just uh, some brewers practice this just to, you know, promote the, as I call it, biotransformation, you know, of some compounds. I find in my experience you get a fruitier note shining from the hops if you add during active fermentation. Now, it's nice to have multi-layered dry hopping regimes, I Correct. think. I think you get a better result. That's right. Um, but I do notice that if you dry hop during active fermentation, that you tend, now, the last part of active fermentation, not at the start of active fermentation, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but it allows the hops fruitiness to shine through, whereas if it's later, is it grassy or not? More grassy, that's yeah. why, that's a, that's a very common. So, uh, yeah, and the dry hopping as well, also contribute to the haze, I, I miss that one. Yeah. Know, which also is a very important factor. Yeah. And um, yeah, basically it's, this is just, uh, well, basics, you know, when you're designing, you know, your, your, uh, your recipes. Yeah. So if you're wanting to brew a modern pale ale at home or um, commercially, the AB New E is a haze positive uh, strain. Um, we would suggest that you pay attention to the grist, so you're, um, that you're getting the right amount of proteins using the flake torrified oats, wheat, torrified wheat, whatever, um, or even cold and naked oats, whatever the choice may be. Um, get your grist right, um, use a haze positive strain, get your water profile right because obviously there's an element of you want to flip your salts usually for a New England IPA because you want that softer pillowy chewy mouth feeling as opposed to the you know the, the same water profile you use for a, a clean west coast ale. Um, fermentation temperature for this is this going to be early 20s? <laughs> yeah that's right yeah so um, uh, you know uh, some brewers say ferment colder some 19 degrees Celsius but like I would say yeah, 20, 22 degrees, you know, yeah. that's so, so, which is quite common range, you know, yeah. so it's also easier. And this punches through a really nice sort of um, fruit finish in the beer as well, so that it can, the yeast actively contributes to flavour, not just the hops, it's got that. That's right, that's right, so it has a, a nice, uh, uh, you know, this is one of the main features of this strain, they give yeah. you a very nice fruity character, Yeah. Uh, and uh, sometimes kind of, you know, citrusy but also kind of peach you know yeah. uh, notes there and, and also the, the and the texture you know and the mouth field yeah uh, you know the this strain uh, leaves some a bit more higher residual you yeah. know extract which contributes to the mouth field so yeah it's a, it's a perfect choice you know it's a very reliable yeast strain for production of of this type of beers I'm not a fan of lactose <laughs> in beer at all and you had mentioned this last night when we were chatting yeah, it's a, a little bit of lactose in a New England um, it helps. Helps a lot. Yeah, 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 it makes some difference. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm open to trying that. I think maybe my experience with lactose has been milkshake IPAs and pastry stouts, and I just can't, the sweetness, it's like a sickly sweetness for yeah, me. That's but right. It's very, I don't know, my palate's quite sensitive as it is, you know, in terms of like I, I pick up flavors really easily that maybe people wouldn't pick up. So, um, just a point that I thought I'd drop in there, even though I dislike lactose. Andres says that it works well with this. Yeah, yeast exactly. Things. You know, it's uh, of course in, uh, in little doses, and uh, yeah, but it really helps to uh, for the mouthfeel as well. Yeah. But also uh, this uh, really slightly sweetness also help you with the, with the hot character yeah. of the product. So uh, yeah, it, it really makes some difference. What percentage of grist are we talking here in terms of? You know, are we five percent, two percent, or whatever? If for the lactose addition, I mean, I prefer to leave that to the to the brewers to experiment. You know, yeah. because that depends on the you know the the, the the brewer preference. But it is a low dosage rate. It's not a okay. no. It's not. It's not, not, not high. Okay. Just to avoid that kind of uh, yeah, this sweetness that you 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 yeah. don't appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Juicy by name, juicy by nature, <laughs> juicy by flavor, whatever way you want to put it. Um, we're excited to have um, worked with AB on this strain. Um, it's got a nice, sexy new label. 
it's delivering the goods in terms of that modern hazy pale ale it's in stock in abundance so get on it let us know what you think of it and um if you want to send Andres some sample bottles in the post, I'm sure he'd not say no. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, happy brewing.